Okay. And so let's come to a easy cross leg seated position. We have a nice sun coming through my room at this time of the day that we're going to enjoy for some light. And but it might get darker. Hopefully, we'll have enough light. So come to that comfortable seated position, whether it's easy pose cross leg, it can be half lotus. If you're comfortable and flexible, it can be full lotus, whatever you pick to be tonight. And kind of find your settling here. And let me know in the chat, I'm looking at the window right now, if the sound is right. I forgot to ask you because I have some music in the background. So I want to make sure that you can hear me. Looks like all is good, so hopefully it will stay good. Let's start this again. Just find your seat, find your breath, find your landing. Find a space for you to start the practice from and to hang out out of the room, out of your body, out of the mind, whatever you've been thinking about, what has been just lingering in your mind or being actively present in your mind and let the breath do what it does the best bring awareness to your own body sensations and enter that body space dropping from the head into the body finding deeper inhales and longer exhales and allowing yourself to settle and ground a little bit more and within that space you may want to set an intention for your practice this evening whatever that intention that some kalpa is for you tonight and take maybe a couple more breaths really planting that intention into your being into your heart into your presence and then we're going to start when you're ready waving the spine from side to side and as you're waving the spine allow the head to follow the movement but at first it might be a little uh, achy a little like uh, rough but uh, progressively you might find a little more ease and comfort in the swaying of your spine and therefore your head is able to softly follow the movement of the spine inhaling and exhaling from side to side Breathing in, breathing out. Maybe you're already finding a pattern for yourself where the breath, the inhale goes onto a specific side of the swaying and the exhale goes into the other side. Take a couple more from side to side. Relaxing the jaw, the face and slowing down coming back to your center and from that center let's start rolling the spine around and i personally like to find the support of the hands here pressing down into the legs so that allow the spine to be a little more at ease to have less tension in the back and less activation of the belly so it becomes more subtle it warms up with a little more ease and see if you can broaden that circle to going a little lower and back and maybe you slow down for that lower and back and a couple more and back to center to go the opposite direction you could start up here finding first your rhythm and finding a spine that 
gets a little more comfortable in this direction as we tend to choose the easiest direction first. So the, when we switch, it might be a little awkward or a little more challenging or less smooth. And then when you're ready, you go broader out if your spines and your hips allow. You're not really forcing in. You're just finding that momentum that the body wants to go there. Take a couple more. And bring yourself back to center progressively. Don't stop all at once. And back to center. Arms out to the side. Inhale, brought, uh, spread the fingers. And exhale, cross the arms. Grab behind the shoulder blades. Round the back as you drop the chin in. Inhale, gently arch the back as you open the arms as far back as you can. And exhale, cross the arms the opposite way and hug in. And we're going to do this a few more times. Inhaling, opening, and exhaling, hugging in, rounding. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And I don't know if you can hear my breath, but I shifted to a breath that is a little more engaged, a little more fiery, a little more regulated, right? Inhale, sniff and lengthen the breath. Exhale, squeeze it out. Opening the chest, opening the lungs. As we open also the spine. Two more. And last. Keep the hug in on that last one. And we're going to gently cuddle and twist from side to side. Kind of warming up that mid spine. Breathing nice and long in the hug. So here, because we're hugging the front part of the body that tends to inflate out a little bit more, we're kind of forced into breathing in between the shoulder blades in this hug. Couple more. Back to center. Now you're going to slide your hands to your elbows and lift the arms up, kind of making a square to frame your head and stretch and use a pulling action as if you were going to, if you release the grip of your hands and fingers, it would go out this way. So gentle pull here, stretch up, lengthen. And from here, we're going to rotate around the rib cage, the armpits and the elbows. Take a few deep breaths here in the rotation. Still opening that chest and breathing capacity. One more. Come up and then release out and down. And we're going to cross the arm the opposite way. Hopefully we remember. Inhale, arms out. And then cross opposite arm on top. Grab behind. If it feels very familiar and very easy, probably you should try the opposite arm on top. And we're going to hug in here and start the same little twisting from side to side. It's not a major twist. It's more of a warm up of the spine. It's kind of a screwing kind of, yeah, a little screwing motion from right to left, left to right. And again, explore that breathing in between the shoulder blades, shifting a little bit the attention of the breath to a different area that and your default, even in the yoga practice, we tend to focus on the front body when we're breathing and having that awareness, but not as often into the back body. So try to bring that attention to the space between the shoulders as you breathe in and out. Feel the squeezing in, the soft release. Few more.
and slow down come back to center slide the hands along the arms to grab opposite elbows inhale arms up to frame your head if this is a little too tight it can be further forward doesn't have to be all the way to the top of the head or back but if you can try to be your best to get there and from here we're going to rotate keep on having that pulling action across the elbows and roll to around the rib cage you're not rotating from the waistline your hips are in position you're not rolling into the pelvic floor it's all from low ribs up and breathe nice and deep and we lost the music it was so nice one song and gone but that's okay it's not meant to be i guess for now at least a couple more rotations and back to center releasing slowly out expand and down maybe you decide to cross the legs the opposite way if not you can stay in the same position and we're going to go sideways left hand to the ground far out but not too far that you're losing the connection of the right sit bone just out enough that you can lean over without being shy right here and then lift that right arm up and stretch away from the right knee to the right fingertips and see if it feels a little more engaged when you rotate your little finger in and back instead of just parallel to the floor or out rotate kind of squeeze your arm rotate from the armpit out to the fingers and breathe relax your head down press into the left hand and push the right hip down a little bit more and then soften that right arm bending the elbow bring your hand behind your head and open the elbow back open the right shoulder you're using your hand to hold on your head so there's no tension in the neck can rest and you open big feel the stretch from the front of the right hip right side of the belly into the right side of the chest one more breath and then soften in release your arm and bring yourself back to center take a full inhale and exhale right into center and let's switch right hand down to the side again not to close in not super far out just the right distance that gives you space here but allows the left hip to ground down and then bring your left arm up and across and stretch and pull from your left hip and left knee to your left fingertips again you can rotate your head in and back and feel that inner rotation of the arm and breathe expand the breath into the rib cage to the left you can relax your head here and nice long breath you can look up toward the ceiling or look down if your neck is really tight it feels better to look down and release completely the tension of the neck one more pull here one more breath before we switch and then bend the elbow behind you hold your head with your hand and then open the left elbow left shoulder back and transfer the stretch from the side to the left front of the body from the front of the left hip front of the left side of the belly left side of the chest one more breath and then soften gently in to release and push and lift up and come back to neutral left hand goes to the right knee again if you need to sit, shift the legs it's kind of nice not to get into the habit of crossing the legs always the same way so having the opportunity to switch from exercise to exercise kind of bring both sides to be a little more equal left hand to the right knee right hand behind you and you're going to inhale and exhale twist to the right turning your head gently over the right side
Two more breaths here in stillness, keeping the pose. And then gently releasing back to center, inhaling. Exhale to the other side, right hand to the left knee, left hand behind, inhale tall, exhale twist. Put your head over to the left shoulder. One or two more breaths here, depending on the length of your breath. And then gently releasing back to center, inhale into center, exhale, slide out and forward into forward fold, either drop onto your elbows or extend your arms out and drop your forehead down. And breathe and lengthen through your back. One more breath, dropping the belly down. And then walk back in, come back to sitting. And here you can either stay in a cross leg seated position or you may transition to hero pose where you come to your shins, knees, in front of the feet, top of the feet. And hopefully this is comfortable for for you, if it's not, you go back to cross leg seated position. You can also, if this is not comfortable for some reason, to the top of the feet, you can place something underneath your ankles. Or for some people, it's more comfortable for the knees to sit up, place something between the heels and the sit bones. So you have different options here to explore. And we're going to do a little um, Kundalini Kriya that works on that belly fire before we go on with other movements. And the Kundalini Kriya is going to be with the arms up where you point the index fingers forward, left thumb goes on top if you're a woman, right thumb goes on top if you're a man, the rest of the fingers are uh, crossed together. And we lift the arms up here and we're going to use a mantra called Sat Nam. And sat, imagine that you're punching, you're being punched in the belly. Sat, and then you relax. Nam. Sat. 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 Nam. Keep on going. Sat. Nam. For about 30 seconds more. Keep on punching the belly on the inhale and relaxing on the exhale. Sat. Nam. 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 Sat. Nam, set, nam, set, nam, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, stretch up, hold the breath in as you squeeze the pelvic floor, the chin in, hold as long as you can hold it without feeling agitated. And exhale, release the breath, release the arms out to the side, shake it out. And let's come to sitting again, extending your legs out to the front, to wider than mat distance apart, not too far out that you're losing the connection to your back and you start rounding. The right distance that you can still have that low back that is slightly arching, not in a forceful arching, but in a way that you have that neutral spine that is available to you. And we're going to flex the feet. And th I think that now I'm warm enough to release my socks. And from here, we're going to go from side to side, rotating to the right, exhaling to the knee, inhale center, and exhale to the left. Breathe into center, 
exhale to the right, breathe into center, exhale to the left. And we keep on going from side to side, kind of in a gentle bouncing way, so you're not going, aiming to going too far down, if that happens, good. But it's not about how deep you can go into that forward fold on the leg. It's more of the warming up back of the legs as you bounce from one leg to the other leg. You also think about bringing the chin down instead of the head. Do that in quality, we're rounding here. Whereas if you stretch your chin forward, it keeps your back just a little longer and a little straighter. And we inhale to center, exhale to the side. You can have a little forceful breath in and out, same equal amount of breath in to breath out, with kind of a sneezing or sniffing action through the nose. So here now, as we've been war uh, warming up mostly the torso, and then we reach at some point a little bit in the hips. Now we're getting into the hips and legs. Thirty more seconds. Ten more seconds. Three, two, and one. Come back to center, relax your feet. Take a moment to close your eyes, take a couple breaths, a three breath here to feel the body, to feel the sensations all along. Deep inhale, long exhale. And opening your eyes, we're gonna bring the right foot in, keeping that left leg out and grabbing the right knee and i believe that at least one of you that is in the call tonight if not two have done this with me we're going to shake the detergent bottle and shaking the detergent bottle means that you're grabbing your knee and you're tapping and shaking down if your knees far up you can still bounce it right here with your hand if your knee is down you literally grab it and you start shaking down and as we shake the leg down, you keep the breath flowing nice and smooth and long. So there's a contrast between the breath being calm and deep, the left leg being rooted and relaxed, and the right leg getting really agitated. And this is coming from a Hatha Yoga tradition it's a traditional part of a traditional sequence that is called releasing the winds. And I know for sure that in Dallas it was quite windy rest yesterday. So you release any kind of uh, wind have got trapped into your hip joint. A few more. And release. Sit up. And enjoy the sensation from the right knee down into the right hip you can also have some sensations in the low back in the belly and for sure in the arm that did all the shaking and let's switch sides you reopen that right leg out to fold the left leg in and left foot in make sure here that you're rooted on your sit bone that there's no rounding happening so sometimes i suggest that you can grab the flesh out of the way and spread the butt cheeks apart and back and that makes you rotate the hips forward and find a deeper rooting into the sit bones 
and then you rotate the shoulders to the left and you grab the left knee or you use your hands to the inside of the knee if the knee is far up and if the knee is up you're going to press and kind of push up and down find that bouncing and if your knee is down we start the shaking deep long breath in the shaking of the leg keep your face relaxed it's really easy to tense up here uh, this is a very active movement but try to keep everything that is not involved in the shaking to keep that relaxed softness right your right leg is completely relaxed there's no flexing of the right foot your right leg is heavy and then your face again is completely relaxed no tensing of the jaw no frowning of the eyebrows deep inhales and exhale you feel that the movement of the legs start a little pumping at the heart space also like activating the blood flow a little differently a little more actively let's keep on going just a little bit more and then slow down and release come back to center and feel again notice all the sensations that may have arisen from the shaking of the leg take a deep breath in and a long breath out and then opening your eyes if you close them like me to appreciate those inner sensations we're going to extend both legs out to the front shake them out a little bit and then we're going to place the sole of the feet together and the legs are in a diamond shape hands land to the front of the shins and we're going to rock the hips forward and back and as we do that there's a spinal flex that happens so here you might see one uh, angle of my movement and not quite get it so I'm going to go sideways but it's literally a rocking along your sit bones forward and back and if you can so that when I'm rolling back I personally find it easier to release a little bit the, le the hands from the legs and then grab them again as I'm going forward and using those hands to pull me forward so you find kind of a momentum between the two movements going from one end to the other end of the movement the head is following gently going forward opening the throat a little bit in a way and then as you're rocking back naturally the head tilts in a little bit and then find your breath where is the inhale going where the exhale is landing You can get a little more actively engaged in the movement or you can go slower and go to a fuller range of motion up to you whether you want to create some heat or you want to create some um, focus and awareness and stretching in the movement the choice is yours depending on what your body Knees. We're going on for another 10 seconds or so. And last two. And come back to center. Inhale tall. And exhale, fall forward, head toward the feet. If they're not reaching there, that's fine, but you're aiming to that. Relax your shoulders, relax your head, and breathe. Two more breath here, letting the body go a little deeper down if that's available to you. And rolling your spine back up. Coming back to center, stretching both legs out 
shake them out and sitting back up gonna bend the right knee up grab either behind the thigh behind the calf or catch to the ankle or even for some of you you can catch to the foot and we're gonna pull back a bit and stretch up make sure that even if you're catching at the foot your back is nice and long you're not just wanting to aim there so find the right position along your legs so your back can be nice and long reaching with the sternum up and here we're going to go into one round of breath of fire so breath of fire is a pumping breath actively engaging from the belly where the belly is pressing in to squeeze the breath out and then relaxing when the breath comes in and can have a rhythm that is very simple and slow or you can accelerate and progressively build up into going faster. Uh, I know for several of you that are on this uh, in this session today that you know what breath of fire is, but it's always good to have a reminder, right? So here you inhale, exhale, squeeze the breath out. Take another inhale, relaxing the belly and start pumping the breath. As you're pumping the breath, the breath out coming out comes out through the nose and it has that quality of a sniffing of the breath out on going your left foot is flexed you're pressing the back of the left leg down and we keep on pumping the breath three two one inhale and deep exhale and release that right leg down release your hands behind shake your legs out and remember we have two legs that means that we're going to do the same on the other side so bend your left knee up grab either behind your thigh behind your calf catch your foot whatever it feels right inhale here exhale lift find your position root ground through the back of the right leg flexing the right foot drop the shoulders and let's go again into breath of fire and if you feel dizzy if breath of fire does not feel right to you tonight you can still go into deep breath in and long breath out keeping that same position let's go for the round of breath of fire take a deep breath in squeeze the breath out and start pumping the breath at the belly. Three, two, one. Inhale. Long exhale. And release the leg down. Release the hands behind. And gently shake the legs out. Let's transition now to all fours. Hands come underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And we're going to give a little swing for to the hips from side to side, swaying your tail from side to side. And then in that sway, you're going to find a circle up 
across and down and around. So we're circling around the hips, just a little bit of movement shifting forward and back, but not major. You're trying to really get into the hips. There's a rolling under of the hips and then a stretching from one side to circling around and back. One more in this direction. And then reverse, circle your hips the opposite way. Curling in, back and out. Couple more here. And back to center now, bring the movement across the shoulders. So you drop the chest and you're going to roll out to the right and around to the back to the left and back to the front and down. You're rotating across the chest and to the upper back as if you were rolling into a um, funnel, a uh, tunnel, a uh, cylinder, something like that, a barrel, that's it rolling around the shoulders and reverse trying to isolate the shoulders here one more come back to center now we bring the two together I'm gonna roll out to the right round up Across to the left, across the floor, and then again, and find that rotation into the barrel, none of the other items, or in whichever way feels right to you to visualize or to feel in your own body. Couple more. Back to center and shift. Go to the other side, rotating all around. Last two. Back to center, let's settle in center for a full cow stretch and a full cat rounding. Breathe in into cow and breathe out into cat. Two more, breathe in and out. And last, breathe in and out. Coming back to neutral, gonna go into thread the needle in movement. So make sure that you're right knee position here, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And we're gonna start with the uh, left side. So you're gonna ground into your right hand, press and lift the left arm up and then sway it under the right arm, land the shoulder, land the head, and then push back up, inhale, and exhale. Breathe in, and out. Find that big opening as you push the floor away, and then swing under and find that grounding, even if it's for one second before you push away again. So here, what feels really good is to find the in-between breath, to find that spot, that phase between breath and breath out, that nothing happens, and that gives you a pause in the movement, and then you go on, find that other end, and shift. More. This is natural organic breath we can. It is not forced, but it's acknowledged. Last one. And on this last one, you're going to stay and thread the needle. Bring your left shoulder down, left cheek down, and then you can explore extending your right arm um, straight out of the head forward and find that gentle movement, kind of a bouncing, rolling onto the left shoulder and left arm from closing a little bit, 
to opening and stretching back and twisting a little bit more. Feel that lengthening through the right side from the fingertips to the right hip. One or two bouncing movement here and then settle in between. Ground the weight into the left shoulder. You can reposition your head a little bit. You can stay either here or you can lift and step your right foot out to the right. And now you have a second anchor, a really strong anchor out into that right foot to roll along the left shoulder, spread into the left shoulder blade, meaning that your left shoulder blade is sliding away because it's grounded and now you're pressing the spine away from the shoulder blade and you access that space that I don't know about you, but in my case, I hold a lot of knots underneath the shoulder blades. And this is one of the only exercises, technique that I can do to get into that spot. So it can be a little tender, a little achy if you have a lot of knots in there. Take a couple breath here. And close your eyes to appreciate the stretch working its way deeper into the shoulder blade. And then you're going to roll back towards the right foot, rolling your right shoulder back towards the right, then slide your right hand in to give extra support before you bend your right knee in. And push and release. Extend the left arm up and release the left hand down. Realign yourself to all fours first before we go on to the other side. And let's switch. Now you're pressing into the left hand, reach up to the right arm. Exhale, thread the needle. Inhale, push up. Exhale, under. Breathe in. Use the floor. Literally use the floor to get deeper into the stretch to have a pulling action as you hit that shoulder down. Couple more. And next one, we're staying in thread the needle right cheek down right shoulder down and using your left hand you're going to that gentle bouncing i'm going to turn around so you can see me and hear me a little better but stay where you are and i'm bouncing with that left hand into the stretch of the shoulder and the twist Couple more here. And then come back to that center to stretch the left arm away. Ground that left hand and roll into opening that shoulder a little bit more. And then again, you have a choice here to make depending on how your body feels. To lift that knee up and step the left foot out to the side, find that anchor. And then you're going to open and roll and pull. Pull the right shoulder blade away from the spine. And breathe. Your right arm is super heavy. Completely relaxed. And you find your different stages of edges once you hit one edge and you pause there and breathe a little deeper the body starts opening up and bringing you another edge to explore two three more breath here then roll back toward the left bring your left hand for support in front of your face and then fold that left knee back in Push into your left hand to release your right arm up and release your right hand down. Now bringing your arms forward into a modified down dog where you bring your sit bones, you slide the sit bones back and up and forehead down. So here, because you're fully supported, it's not like you're in the high up do uh, down dog. Able to stretch, hopefully into the armpits as you keep on pressing into your hands, 
If you're pretty low here and deeply stretch into the armpit, you can aim to bring the chin down. But if this is too much, forehead is fine. Now here, as my hands are anchored, my forehead or chin is anchored, I think about sliding the sit bones further back. Not down, because you're still tilting your hips under and up, but I'm stretching away sit bones back and feel that deepening of the stretch through the arms and chest. Two more breaths here. And then you're gonna pop the back of the shoulders up to start releasing and then transition forward to bring the hips through and down. Bend the elbows accordingly. That can be a deep stretch after what we just did. Opposite stretch, lift up. Make sure that the front of the feet is pressing down and try to aim to bring the little toes in contact with the floor. And lift up. If this is way too much on your low back, the compression is not comfortable at all, you can go down into sphinx pose, coming down onto your forearms and elbows. Up to you. You can also modify bending the elbows a little deeper down. Or if you feel super good here, you can straighten the arms and lift up. Make sure your shoulders are not up to the ears, neither rolling forward. Try to keep the shoulders back and down. And breathe into that front belly. Feel the stretch and pull from the front of the hips to the low ribs. One more breath here. And then we're going to slowly release belly lower ribs down slide your hands to frame the chest push away big toes touch and fold back into child's pose here you have the choice either your arms forward or you can bring the arms to the side of the legs and completely relax down One or two more breaths here. And then extending your arms forward. Come up to all fours. Reposition yourself in that tabletop position. And we're going to shift the weight to the right knee and swing the left leg up. And we're going to use that left leg like a pendulum, swinging forward and back. And you don't need to straighten the leg straight out. You're using that swinging. And you're leveraging that also with the lifting and the nodding down of the head. Find the rhythm of your breath in here where the swing goes. Two more. In, curl in, chin to knee. And then release to an inch over the floor. And we're gonna swing back, open the knee out to the side, slide it forward and back down. Roll back and up, open to the side, toward the armpit and down. Two more, rotate up out forward and down and last one up out forward and down and shift knee forward open out swing back and across and close swing forward open to the side rotate back and down two more swing open go over and down and last open across and down bring your toes under stretch back sit bones to heels stretching in the glutes taking a couple breath here 
And let's go to the other side. You're gonna come back to all fours. And we're gonna swing the right leg this time, up and forward. And with a slight arching and rounding of the back, following the movement of the knee and leg with your head, Two more and crunch in chin or nose to knee and then you're gonna swing back and up open to the side and close down lift up rotate out to the right and down lift rotate hug at the belly and down two more lift rotate and swing down, last one, lift, rotate, and down, and switch. Gonna go out to the right, swing across, open the hip, and then roll in and down. Open out, swing across, find those edges in your own body. Go for what feels good. It doesn't mean that it feels easy all the time, but if you have a deep sensation in any part of this movement, probably you're hitting something interesting there to release. One more. And release. Both knees down. Roll the toes under. Stretch the sit bone back to the heels. Stretch into the sole of the feet and leverage things out here. Deep inhale, long exhale. Keep your hands rooted, broaden, like spread the fingers wide. P start pressing away from the wrist and spread the weight into your fingers. And then lift up into down dog. Find your down dog. Maybe you have to broaden the distance between your feet and hands. Maybe not. And then give a little swing to the hips from side to side and try to get it into a high swing not bending the knees and going all across it which is a very nice move also but it's a different dynamic just a little sway here and back to center anchor your feet bend your knees if you need to leverage with your back so you're not rounding forward and you're going to bring your left hand about one palm in so it's a little more distributed between your left hand and your feet. And you're going to slide that right hand out and back. And then when you reach almost to your feet, you drop the top of the head down. You bend your right elbow and you sink into that space, keeping your left arm really strong. You turn your head over to the left, underneath the left armpit. And you breathe here. Feel your left arm fully engaged. Your legs are also strongly engaged, lifting the sit bones up. Then look forward, slide your right arm towards the front and try to land onto your forearm. Right elbow, and then we're gonna lift the left leg up, flex the foot, turn the toes in, Squeeze and breathe. Then release that left foot down. Push away. Right hand forward. Reposition into your full down dog. Drop onto your knees. Bring your hands together. Palms together. Elbows underneath the shoulders. And then you're going to reach back and bring your hands to behind your head and anchor those elbows forward, stretch into your upper arms. Two more breaths here. Releasing your hands forward, shift forward, 
walk your hands in to sit on your heels if that's available if not sit just flat on your mat or in cross leg easy pose and shake your hands out a little bit because we've been putting a lot of weight on them of pressure and then go into gentle rolls of the wrists in one direction and the other direction and let's go for the other side slide out up into down dog again very important that's going to release tension from your wrist push activate your hands all the way to the fingertips stretch away if you're getting tired here and your wrists are misbehaving not feeling right then you can take that same movement here and you would stretch forward and here not only totally to uh, thread the needle, but trying to rotate under. If you can still go the same way we went on the other side, lift up. Bring your right hand about one palm in. And then slide that left hand towards the right foot, flip the palm up and drop into that left elbow and stretch. And breathe. one more breath then look forward slide the forearm down reposition a bit lift your right leg up and stretch rotate your toes in if you're tight in the back of the left leg it's okay to bend the knee and lift the heel up squeeze the belly one more breath Pop and stretch up, reposition, right foot down, drop onto your knees, drop onto your forearms, hands together, and then anchor your elbows forward and stretch into the upper arms as you bring your hands behind your head. Deep long breath here. Releasing your hands forward and shifting up, coming to all fours and then come back to sitting. Extend your legs out to the front. Shake your legs out. And let's go into a little bit of up work. To re-engage that belly and that core, not that we left it aside because we've been pretty active here, even though we haven't been standing. So you're going to bring your left knee up around that left foot. You wrap your hands to the front of the shin. You shift back and you're going to lift and lower that right leg, flexing the foot. You lower it to about two inches from the floor. If this feels pretty easy, then you release the hands from the knee and arms forward and you keep on lifting and lowering. A few more. And then lift up, hold back and lift your left foot up and find that balance between the two. Grab the knee, land your right leg, land your left foot, open the left knee out to the side in Janu Shirsasan. Inhale, tall. Exhale, fold forward, relax the belly, relax the back, relax the leg down. And breathe.
couple more lengthening breath into your forward fold. And gently releasing as you walk and roll your way up. And extend that left leg out to find your staff pose. 90 degree angle between the spine, the legs, you press your hands down to the side, you roll the shoulders back, chin comes slightly in. Take one inhale here. If you're familiar and comfortable with breath retention, hold the breath in. Squeeze the pelvic floor, squeeze the low belly as you keep the retention. And exhale, relax it all. Bending your right knee up, bring your right foot flat on the mat. Then clasp your fingers to hold to the front of the shin. Shift the weight back without rounding and collapsing. And then lift the left leg up and down. Soft gaze forward. Keep your face nice and relaxed. Deep, long breath. No need to pump even deeper with breath of fire. If you want to, you, you're my guest, but probably we've done a lot of breath of fire for tonight. So keep on breathing nice and long. And then if you feel pretty stable here, Release the arms and keep on lifting and lowering the leg. Last one, lift up. And then lift that right feet and right foot up and breathe. Grab the knee, bring the right foot down Bring the left leg down, open your right knee out, inhale tall, and exhale fold. And breathe in your forward fold, enjoy your forward fold. We're staying here for several rounds of breath, so take your time, take it easy, just enjoy. Press down through your extended leg, press down into your sit bones, walk your hands in and roll the spine up. Release the right leg forward, come back to Dandasan staff pose, hands to the side of the hips or pushing down into the fingers, shoulders down, press down into the legs as you flex your feet and bring a chin lock in, squeeze the pelvic floor, low belly, take a deep inhale and hold exhale release all the way out bringing your feet to the edge of the mat so you have plenty of room behind you and then we're gonna bend the knees up and go into spine rolls hands behind your legs we're going to roll forward and back, keeping the chin gently in as you're rolling. Using the weight of your legs against your hands to pull you forward and then find the momentum to roll back. A couple more if that feels right to you. The next one, you're going to land back and stay. Grab the knees. Knees rolls out to one side using your hands.
and reverse. Coming back to center, press both knees in, press the low back down into the mat, and then release gently the pressure to bring the right foot across underneath the left knee for reclined pigeon. And then here you can either grab left hand to the right foot, right hand to the knee, and you use the left knee to push in, or you can traditionally bring your right arm inside your leg and clasp your hands behind the left leg as you pull in. Or sometimes people also like to put the hands on top of the left shin and press in. So you have plenty of options here, whichever feels good to you. Another one also, if you're really close into your chest, for some of you it might feel good to bring the right foot to the inside of the left elbow and wrap your right arm around your right knee and press in a little deeper. And now here, you can use your left knee still for support to squeeze in and breathe. In any of those positions, make sure that your head is relaxed, that you're not just to force that stretch pressing to the upper head and popping your neck, because that's a little tense on your cervical spine. So make sure that your chin is slightly in and you're relaxing down. So the shoulders also can ground, and it's just a, a leg work here to whichever degree that allows your back and your head to feel nice and comfy. As we stay here for another few breaths, another variation would be to extend the left leg up and then you have access to walking your hands. But again, it's not the goal to really reach up and lift your head and shoulders, keep everything down. And if the leg comes to you, then you catch it. If not, you go back to the initial position. One more breath here. And we start releasing the left leg forward first, and then release that right leg back down. Bring your feet mat distance apart, and give yourself a few rolls, dropping the knees from side to side. That always feels good for a reset. Before we go to the other side. Back to center. And preparing for the other side, bring both knees up, give a little push. And then release that right foot down or close to down, just to be able to bring the left foot over and then start pressing in. What can be already also useful to protect the knee is to keep your left foot engaged, flex the foot, you can even engage the toes out. And that way you don't have any kind of awkward angle that might create tension into the knee, right, and, and pressure. So that's a good leverage. Again, right hand can catch the foot and left hand the knee, or you can clasp your hands behind your right leg and pull in, or you can bring your hands to the front of the right shin. So let's just go with what feels right to you now. And breathe. As we're gonna stay here for several breaths, your body might start opening up, especially your left glute and your left hip. And so you can always modify from one variation to another one, kind of play with different levels of your stretch, including going all the way into bringing the foot to the inside of the elbow and wrap your arms around. Again, making sure that you're able to relax the shoulders and head down, even in that position. So if you feel this is too intense, that your head is lifting up, like pushing up, and your neck is doing some kind of weird thing, then go back to the initial position or one more level, something that feels comfortable for your back to be completely relaxed. Plenty of room here to breathe really deeply. You can close your eyes and really get into the evolving sensations in your body, how things are shifting 
a little bit in tiny steps or in major steps. If your left leg is pretty comfy folding in, maybe you want to take that last variation of stretching your right leg up and catch your right leg with your hands and pull it in towards you. For some of you, it might even mean to grab the big toe and pull it in. Whatever feels the right axis for you tonight to get the full spectrum of sensation into your stretch. Another aspect here, as we keep this pose just a little bit more, is that make sure you're not curling the tailbone up. See the difference? My tailbone is lifting up. Keep the low back and the tailbone reaching forward, and that gives that softening to the back. And release if your leg is extended up and then start lowering that right foot first and release your left foot and left leg open your feet mat distance apart and swing the knees and hips across from side to side coming back to center bring your feet right behind your sit bones Bring your arms along the side of the body. And we're going to inhale, press into the feet, press and activate the legs and lift the hips up. So that's your first stage of bridge, whichever level that the bridge from that foundation goes up into. Another variation, you can extend your arms behind you and it feels sometimes really, really good to to have that openness which allow the chest to open and rise a little higher with the support of the shoulders you can literally press into the shoulders and pop your heart up and find a little bit more of an enhanced bridge here keep on pressing in your feet lifting your hips a little higher through the action of the legs and then one other variation that I'm offering bring you tonight because that might be the one for you you can bring your arms forward again you squeeze the shoulders under one at a time and you bind hands together underneath the um, tailbone down into the floor you're pressing your little fingers down you're pressing through your arms down and you press even stronger into your feet and legs to lift your hips a little higher last couple breath here and then softening the bind if you're binding with your hands and um, relocate your shoulder blades so spread your shoulders apart and then slowly lower if your arms are behind you swing your arms forward and down and once you land Bring the feet together, sole of the feet together, open your knees out. And you're going to clasp, clasp your fingers and place your hands behind your head and open the elbows out to the side so you're pressing into upper arms, <coughs> sorry, and elbows across and down. And you keep that spaciousness now across armpits and chest and across hips and low back big deep breath here couple more breath in and out And then soften gently the action of the elbows pressing down. Lift your head so you can release your hands out to the side. And then close your knees up. You're going to cross your right leg over the left. You can move your left foot out to the right couple of inches. And then squeeze the hips, slide the hips to the right. Inhale here. Grab the outside of the right knee with your uh, left hand and then exhale, go into that squeeze twist. Legs stay together, 
drop the knees out to the side and then you're going to use the right hand in this half the position we were in before meaning that you bring your right hand behind your head and you open and stretch that right elbow down you turn your head to the right and you breathe here deep long breath find that stretch and openness into the ch uh, chest and find a twist of the spine from mid spine down with the legs pulling out to the left now last touch to this pose here you can release your left hand from the knee and bring that left hand to the crease of the right hip so we have the outside of the right hip and then when it meets with the upper uh, thigh and you plant the base of your palm to the upper thigh and push it down and away so now you're stretching from the inner right hip to the low ribs to the right you're pushing your leg forward and away you slide maybe your right elbow a little further out to the side one more breath deep into the belly and then release the push of the left hand you can release your right hand out to the side inhale and exhale keep your legs crossed as you roll them up and over to center then uncross right where you find your center use your hands to reposition fold your knees in give it a little bounce here and we're going to switch feet down cross your left leg over the right then pull your um, press into your right foot moving your right foot out to the left a couple of inches press into the foot to slide your hips out to the left and grab the outside of the left knee with your right hand releasing your left arm out exhale drop your knees across to the right and then now it's the left hand that goes behind the head you turn your head to the left and you press that left elbow down to the left and now you leverage here maybe your left elbow is not touching all the way down your knees are not touching all the way down to the right you're just finding the right spot in between the leveraging between right and left several rounds of big big breath expanding out and around and squeezing deep into the body as you relieve the breath out and then finally move that right hand if you choose to do so to the base of the palm right at the crease right at the top of the left thigh toward the hip and you're going to press that thigh bone that femur bone forward away from you and feel that extra stretch from the hip to the low ribs to the left pull and stretch that belly away and soften the pressure of that right hand from the leg release as you roll the head to the right that's easier you release your left arm out take an inhale here and exhale keeping your legs together squeeze in and up back to rolling to center once you find the landing of your low back and cross the legs give it a little push knees together toward the chest and then release your feet down and slide your legs out catch your blanket catch your uh, socks maybe you have a pillow to place underneath your head and find your way to your sweet shavasana take your time to really find that spot to land on for shavasana because once you find your shavasana just commit to staying still 
still, still and grounded and relaxed so that you can observe the unfolding, the releasing, the softening of the body. Find that access to deep ease, deep comfort, deep relief. Letting everything go. Nothing else matters than your ultimate comfort here. This is the opportunity to drop, drop into the earth anything that is on your way, that is tensing up your body, that is holding you back from a physical to a mental and emotional level, from a conscious to an unconscious perspective. Start that journey of complete let go, complete acceptance, complete surrender. And start observing how the body is doing its own work here or undoing. That's not a mental activity here to tell the body what to do. There's not a plan, there's not a script, there's not the right way and the wrong way. There's simply a shifting the lead to the body, giving the body its place, its essential role back of taking care of itself. And as the mind wants to get involved in, in, in any and all processes, make it, assign it to be your witness. Let the mind be the watcher for once. And a very non-judgmental, non-critical, very compassionate and accepting witness that out of curiosity is tracing every single movement, inner twig, inner adjustment, inner sensation of the body. Going on a treasure hunt from sensation to sensation, the mind is picking up the pebbles that are leading the way into the body. Entering that realm with playfulness, curiosity, amusement. And to some degree, fascination. When we come really in touch with what the body is feeling, it can be pretty amazing and pretty surprising and a mix of all. That enhances that gratitude for our body. We're feeling alive. We're having access to a full spectrum of sensations and emotions, having the capacity to capture moments, to share, to enjoy. All of it is in your body right here and right now with no need to be anywhere else either in the past of the future just being here so much richness and abundance of sensations from gross to subtle in your body right now
relaxing and dropping just a little deeper. Softening from within so there's a melting without to the surface, into the limbs, onto your skin. Feel and capture this very moment right where you're at. And from that feeling, start opening up to your senses. Opening up to the breath. opening up and out to your surroundings and what you capture around you. And starting inviting gentle movement wherever you feel like moving. Again, don't follow any particular script. Just follow any sensation that arises of your body wanting to move. Follow that first movement to another area and another movement. It can be very tiny, subtle movement. It can be big stretches. You may find yourself wanting to roll from side to side and please do so. And then you might be tempted to roll on one side or just crawl on one side. Or simply find your way to one side. And pause and feel the shift from laying down flat and losing sense of gravity for a while to now bringing yourself in a different angle and getting that sense of gravity running through you. And using the axis of the floor with your body where you connect to that floor to push and rise and find a seat. Doesn't have to be cross leg, it can be legs extended out, it can be one leg in, the other out, whatever your seat and your landing is tonight. 
comfortable and easy, supported from within. Your eyes are still closed. You're still in that deep connection within. You find vertical space through your spine aiming up, but still rooted in your sit bones, in the heaviness of your legs. And finally, you bring one hand to your chest, palm facing toward the chest, and then the other hand on top of it to give yourself a heart hug here. And with a slight pressure on your chest with your hands, give a little massage here, rolling into circles across the chest and keeping your hands on the chest so you're rolling the flesh and the skin as you're gliding it to the rib cage instead of just sliding your hands on top of your clothes. And breathe into that circular massage. Breathe into the hugging of the heart. If it comes to you, you can let go of a sight. Sometimes coming out of Shavasana, Nyan can come. This is all good stuff. It's showing that your parasympathetic nervous system has kicked in and slow down that circular motion against the chest to find the center again with your hands. Keep your hands resting here where we're going to chant one OM. Take a deep inhale. Bowing to your sweet, light, divine presence tonight. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I'm going to come closer to you to turn the microphones on and to stop the recording. And again, if you have any questions or any comments or anything to share,